Hi, it's Tim Clark, 10 Times Matrix News, and we are privileged today to have Anthony Patch back with us today. Today is the 26th of March, uh, and we're going to be really given a treat today because we have a really interesting slide so show presentation for the folks who are out there uh, that will really want to see this. Uh, this is going to be CERN related and ancient civilization related, but I think this might actually uh, um, what would I say, uh, give you an aha moment, <laughs> as it is, of uh, some really interesting research. Um, so uh, we have Chris with End Times Matrix News. She's been doing a lot of great research on this topic, and this is her baby uh, that she's rolling out here, and that's going to be great. And then, of course, we've got Anthony Patch. Anthony is going to be having a big to do on uh, this weekend. You want to go ahead and just promote the uh, engagement sure. that you're having this weekend, Anthony, yeah. right up front? Thanks. And it's great being back together with you guys. Uh, we're looking at uh, Saturday the 28th in Portland at the Hilton Hotel from 6 to 9 p.m. I've been invited by radio talk show host Clyde Lewis of Ground Zero Radio. You can go to Ground Zero to his website. Um, for details and for registration, but uh, we are going to be talking principally about CERN and all of the interrelated topics uh, therein. Uh, we hope to have uh, a huge crowd turn out for this. Uh, Clyde has been promoting this and has been gracious enough to have me on the air. I was on for four hours with Clyde on his national program. I was on a couple of weeks ago as an introductory and we decided that it was important that we have a gathering of people so that we could have a exchange of questions and ideas regarding CERN and the dangers that it poses to our existence here on the planet, much like what we've been talking about here in our uh, End Times Matrix News get-togethers. So again, that's uh, if you happen to be available in Portland on Saturday at 28, 6 to 9 at the Hilton Hotel. We are planning on providing this after the event online for uh, people to listen to. We will not have a video presentation online, but audio only, and that'll be through Clyde's Ground Zero Radio uh, website, and he broadcasts to over 200 stations across the nation. He's number two to coast to coast, and we hope to do something about that. Anyway, that's my little plug. Thanks. That's awesome. So uh, we're going to just get roll, get right into it with Chris's presentation. I think this will spur all kinds of questions. And so we're going to get ready to highlight her box here as she goes into that. So we'll highlight her presentation. All right. So we're going to start off uh, discussing um, the crash that just happened recently and um, kind of tie in some information. We have a, an official a prosecutor from France that um, he was on CNN and he talked about how it was a del deliberate uh, attempt to destroy the aircraft. Um, there was evidence from the uh, voice recorder and it, you know, it was about the pilot in the cockpit. I think one of them was locked out of, of, of the cockpit, but uh, we want to discuss how CERN might be connected to this and some electromagnetic energy, the possibility uh, of this. Here's a map of Geneva where CERN is, and this is like 199 miles from where uh, the crash was. And here you see, uh, here's Angela Merkel, the one that's always showing the hex, hex sign on her hand. Um, she's also on the front of the 2015 Economic Magazine that has a lot of cultist symbolism there. Um, there was a person, um, if you check out Dabu 77's video, um, there was a person on board that worked at the Pentagon on mapping and all of her pictures are blotted out and no one can find any pictures of her. So I just wanted to point that out in case you want to check that out. And so what, one of the questions that we have today is uh, did an electromagnetic field around CERN take down uh, this flight? Here's some pictures of CERN showing the rings and 
of the 666, and we'll get into, into, into this 666 symbolism in Carbon 7 and how that ties in uh, to CERN and the Giza Pyramid with the uh, electromagnetic energy. This is just another symbol of uh, CERN at the MTV Awards. I've showed this before, but the 666, it's all over um, in the occult symbolism everywhere. Um, in 2013, the UN General Assembly proclaimed in 2015 is the year of light. And um, so this could be a possible, um, in September, they could be referring to 2015 as a possible open, opening the portal. And how does that tie in with the Higgs boson and the gluons and the muons and um, this particle accelerator of CERN that's kind of a mimic of the pyramid with the capstone, with the capstone being the energy of the sun representing the, the universe and the seven chakras. It's like a camera, uh, like an oculus, uh, and we'll go into more of that. So today we'll be talking about um, the seven angels and um, how they connect to um, to all of this as well, like the fallen angels. The Ogdode is the eight, so keep in mind that they do worship the eight because Osiris is... Um, he represents Satan, and he is the resurrected uh, to the underground. And so with the Ogdode and the Anid after the flood, uh, they represent the eight, but there are the seven fallen angels. Here's uh, some of the uh, particles shown as a Metatron uh, cube, and we're going to be discussing uh, the Metatron cube. Here's another way of looking at it with the energy from the tuning around the world. And so we're going to be discussing 666 and 661, which is carbon-7, and um, the six neutrons and protons and um, electrons that are part of us as in the flesh. Every barcode in the world, in the computer uh, world, is uh, coded with 666. So the computer in itself is uh, coded with 666. Computer means 666 in numerology, and www means 666. And the shin letter is 666, so just keep that in mind. So here it is again. I just said that. but um, Here's another representation of the pyramid with the six here. I believe these are the, the um, electrons. And one, instead of six neutrons, it, it represents one uh, neutron. And this is representative of the carbon seven, six, seven in the pyramid. And the middle one represents a time dimension, which I do believe is collect, connected to the gluons, which uh, represents uh, the two-faced Janet's uh, god that is um, fused together as one, as the dual, dualism. So here's another picture of Metatron's cube with the, this is the same as the Kabbalah tree, but it's just shaped differently with the Pentagon in the middle. Here's another example of the gluon uh, plasma. Here's another, uh, Anthony was telling me about the glue here. They can actually transfer they can reverse here, I believe. They can change color so they can swap out once they're connected together like this from this glue on here. And here's an example of what it looks like with the light in the middle. So here's uh, what carbon-7 is. It's a little different from uh, the 666 that we have in our flesh. This is six electrons, six protons, and one neutron that represents the sun in the middle. It represents the spark and the seven and the Zayn letter that we've discussed in our previous shows. Here's a Bible verse in Acts 7.43. It says, Yeah, ye took up the tabernacle of Moloch and the star of your god Remphan figures which ye made to worship them, and I will carry you away beyond Babylon. And this is a satanic symbol. Um, I know a lot of people understand this to be the star of David, but 
Uh, if you really read your Bible and study uh, in-depthly, you will realize that this is the star of Ranfin, which is Saturn. And it's a very occultic uh, symbol. So it's also Metatron's cube. And so this also represents Metatron's cube uh, if you stylize it in a different way and you take out two, which is one of them is, is hell, represents the uh, three stars of the Orion Bell. So here is, I can't get too much into this because we don't have a lot of time, but if you want to copy this, Tim and I are going to do an in-depth show uh, furthering a lot of this information on the occult side and how Janice plays into this, but um, <clears throat> this is the magic square of the sun. And so um, we know in the Zodiac there is supposed to be 12 constellations, which there's actually 13 if you count Ophacius. But these are the four. These four are below, and they represent four above, which equal to eight. So when you add three of the triad to each deity, there's three, six, nine, twelve. And they represent Mithra as well. Here's another depiction of the four uh, below or the above that match the four below. It's another uh, Metatron's cube that represents uh, the 661, which is the carbon uh, seven. This is uh, Janus, and this is seven, including the sun. Okay, so seven rays, which is seven uh, rays of energy from the planets through the sun. This is raw, and these are five elements, which are from of the human uh, body, which that's what Satan wants, is he wants to be a human. He wants to be in the image of God. And so that's how the Antichrist will be, I believe, when that portal opens. Um, this was a representation of a video that I had um, with this being the two faces of Janus, they are in the center of the uh, pyramid, and there's a dimension in the middle. And so this represents uh, part of that gluon factor uh, in CERN. This, the only way they could do these things um, that they're wanting to do is through this particle uh, accelerator that we'll get more into with Anthony. But this is another um, circle of the, you know, showing the earth, the uh, fire, water, uh, air and the shin fire being in the center. This is on the telephone of the um, the Jews wear this on their head. And this is the Vav, 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 which is 666 also. And so uh, I believe that this is the one they, they are having reserved for the world to come. I believe this represents carbon seven here with the seven chakras. There are seven serpent illuminations, seven chakras, seven fallen angels. This is a upside down cross with a seven at the launch pad 39 um, for one of the rocket launches. This represents uh, Mercury with the Saturn crescent, the number seven in the upside down cross. Here's a picture of Janus uh, in the uh, primordial egg, representing the eight, which is the Ogdode, and these are the, uh, representing the seven planets, and here's time and space in their hand, showing what the Freemasons uh, symbol is. This is Mithra, which represents the same thing, uh, with the uh, keys in his hand, and this is Mithra bo being born from a primordial egg from a rock, uh, that's the story of Mithraism, and uh, it's a worship of Jupiter. Here's another example of the 12. There are six female and six male. They're all one deity, but they separate into uh, different planets as, as male and female, as uh, two. So Mithra is one deity broken into 12 in the zodiac, and that's just part of the uh, magic square of the sun. Here's another, you know, they're just showing the symbolism of the 666. So I wanted to point out, if CERN is 666, if CERN is a portal and a gateway that represents uh, the gluon factor in the 666, is it possible that 
we were talking about the Zayn letter and the seven, and we talked about Ptah with him being the resurrection of Saturn as Jupiter, and the symbolism of, of this Metatron type cube here. Um, the angel Samuel, that, which represents the four um, sides of the earth, the four faces, which is the ox, the lion, the eagle, and the man, um, he represents this letter. This is the world to come, and it's shaped like an axe. It's also a representative of a letter H in a different language, uh, which represents this DNA. And uh, here's another picture of the Ogdo. They merge with the Enid, uh, which is the nine. Anyone can look up that story of Osiris. Uh, his phallus is all over the world. Uh, it's at the Vatican. All the obelisk represents uh, the phallus of Osiris, and that's who they want to re resurrect. This is the eight-pointed star of, this is the um, United Nations headquarters in Denmark. They built a new building. I know they have one in New York, but this is their building in uh, Denmark. The Temple of the Mount is also eight-sided. These uh, T's in the tall cross, they represent eight because uh, there's four above and four below. And when you make this four into the triangle, uh, this becomes eight. So it's kind of like an occultist hidden... Uh, symbolism, but um, here's the Vatican with the obelisk here with the star there also with the eight-pointed star. And so um, Anthony, we, we talked last time with him about the iron, and the iron has the ability of sustaining a magnetic field around it. Carbon-7 has the uncanny ability to carry hyper-dimensional fields such as fields of thought around it. Um, I just find that really interesting because we've talked about the iron, uh, the phosphorus uh, that is like Venus, the iron that is like Mars, and we've talked about these things um, before, and we might get into that with our discussion here, but um, this is another uh, symbolism of the four corners. This is Yahweh's name, Adonai. Adonai is the same um, as Tammuz. Uh, their name, you can look it up, the, the translations of those things. But this is uh, the representation of Samael also, the four corners of the earth. And we've got into what this name means as female and male, uh, the yoni and the phallus and how that's worshipped uh, with the occultists. And so this is another... Uh, symbol of the pyramid and there's a lot of mercury being seen in the middle um, very interesting but Tim and I will have to do another show on all of that here's another uh, representation of the star with the planets and the snake eating its tail this this represents the universe and so the pyramids um, from what I understand, and open a Stargate portal, I think, in my opinion, that CERN represents a pyramid. And I know the pyramids carry so much energy that you could give us free energy for a lifetime. Um, <clears throat> some of the people that have studied these things, I've read that they said it's kind of like a direct energy weapon that can shoot beams uh, up into the sky when it had the capstone. The capstone is missing. Uh, they are all removed off of the uh, pyramids that, that have this uh, energy. And the uh, architects that have studied this all their lives, they're, they're shaped like a spiral inside. Architecturally, they represent the universe inside, and they have energy inside of them, and the top is like an oculus, uh, like the camera. And here's the pyramids. This one looks taller because... Uh, it's on higher ground, but Khufu's pyramid's really bigger. This is the Giza pyramid, and so these represent the belt of, of Orion and the uh, the brain. And so it's just interesting that Janus's uh, brain, the dualism of the split deity 
and the one deity, one's male and female, one's male, and then they're merged together and they represent the fire, shin letter of the uh, center. And funny because here's CERN's video. They did this wild video here with uh, the, um, the dance that they did and this represents the I believe it represents the um, the God particle, and they want to merge this do do uh, duality. Here's Janus with a duality, and the uh, this is the eagle, the two-headed eagle, which represents Janus and Bata and the dualism. And this is set in Horus when they were one deity. They represent the Y one two three the dual dualism. And here's uh, the queen and king. This is their alchemy symbols above their thrones. Uh, this is her diamond, which is the uh, star of Africa. It's the biggest diamond in the world. So since we're going to talk about a little bit about carbon-7, I wanted to show her uh, giant uh, diamond there. But... Um, So I think I've covered everything here. I skipped around a little bit, but um, I've covered everything on that and the symbolism there. So let me jump will, in then. Okay. Um, go back if you would to your picture showing the UN symbol and the eight sectors of the UN symbol. Um, the actual symbol of the UN itself. Yeah, the one with the 33 in it? No, it, it had another um, symbol next to it. This it was one? also eight. Yeah, there oh. you go. Okay, the Zodiac. Okay. Um, very interesting. Jumps off the page at me because, you know, my whole thing is, is CERN. I, I'm greatly indebted to you for all of this background in the ancients because it totally fits into the physics. My point in this graphic is the main ring at the Large Hadron Collider is comprised of eight separate sectors. So I just want to throw that out that it fits in with all of the other symbolism. And mechanically and spiritually, it has significance in the fact that they've chosen eight sectors or eight portions comprising of this main ring. So from a physics standpoint, it makes sense that it would fit with the spiritual as well because as we said in the last show you cannot distinguish between the two or I should say you can't separate the two they both are part of our universe they're part of our existence so anyway wanted to throw that out yeah I think that there's a mention of some uh, doctors that say there's something connection with eight cells that are never uh, changed in our body that's next to our I can't remember exactly, but uh, something about eight cells in our body. Um, I have right. to look more into that. That's but right. It's interesting because there's a lot of, of significance with, you know, the eight and the eight deities and how um, they fit into all of this with the Ogdode and Mithra. Um, yeah, I mean, I think the point that you're making here is that we really have to appreciate the fact that there's an awful lot of ancient history, studies, practices, rituals, symbolism that we have as a modern society been um, shielded from. We've been, some people want to call it dumbed down, I don't like that, but um, we are not privy to this information because it's not part of our school system, it's not part of our church systems and therefore we've lost touch with what you are bringing up and I think it's fascinating that you've you've brought up what really is the driving force behind what is going on at CERN I've had many many people ask me on the radio emails what is what is driving CERN why are they doing this if it's so dangerous why are they doing this and I think you're on the path here of explaining their intrinsic motivation, what motivates them as a human being to pursue something that on the surface appears to be 
self-destructive. And it's this trying to reach for and ascend to another level. And I know you're going to go into the carbon seven in a moment. And I really want you to do that because that is a critical key for people to focus in on. So let me back off and let you have the floor. Oh, that's okay. Um, well, I just in my opinion, um, the what I was saying before, from what I understand, is that you know the CERN symbolism is the six six six. I mean, this is their this is their symbol. You know, and so when we're looking at carbon seven, uh, this has to do with with the uh, the other dimension that they're trying to open with this portal because they want to be their own god. When you're, um, you know, with this meditation and the seven uh, chakras and ascension uh, into other dimensions which this is not what our God uh, intended, you know, through Jesus Christ. You know, Jesus never taught to do this. He never said to chant. He always said, you know, don't worship the sun and the moon and the stars. Uh, you know, the Bible talks about the, uh, the star of Remphan, which is Saturn. And, and so I think that their goal is, is to, um, to bring this spark and I don't really understand a whole lot of how the Higgs boson works into this, uh, into this. But um, I know that they they were accelerating the um, CERN machine, and so this is like a building up of their of them uh, building up the strangelets and everything. So I think that they understand from an occultic point of view because the occults uh, they have a, a oral thing an oral Torah they have an oral thing that they do that they don't they never write it down so these things are based upon um, just of knowledge of of certain uh, bloodlines and certain people, so we are not going to know everything. There, there's so much hidden from us that we don't know. But there are people that are in the occults. We have time on our side. Uh, we have technology, and they have to use these things, which a lot of these things will go against them because there's a lot of people in the occult that have come out that have talked about these things uh, and that we're aware of, just like the. Some of the, the satanic people that have gotten out of cults, they've uh, been able to um, have out-of-body experiences and go around, and they do this by blood. You know, they do a lot of blood sacrificing. So I'm sure that there is some type of blood sacrifices that go along with these things in order to open up the portals and all the pyramids that are on certain ley lines. That's why there are incidences that have happened uh, on 666th Street or at certain schools. Or uh, that's to my understanding of of how they do things with energy and uh, and blood and sacrifice. So you know sacrifices uh, that they did. And so whenever 9/11 happened, there's some videos where some cars were warped. That just doesn't happen. I mean, I know that there was, a, you know, explosions and everything like that, but cars all the way down the street were warped and disfigured. And there was a big cube on a boat that, that was out there during that time, and there's, there's pictures of that. So um, I actually have a picture of – this is just one little picture. Let me interrupt. But, you, did you say a large cube, cube oh yeah. on a boat? Oh yeah, uh -huh. yeah. On a barge. Yeah, it was on a barge. Was this a large black cube? Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Yep. Do you happen to know the dimensions of it? Was it cubical or was it rectangular? It was cubical. It was huge. <laughs> About. Uh, can you give me a rough estimate of the size? I I don't know. I'm thinking um, probably like a size of a, 
of a room, of I'm a regular room. Of, I'm trying to think of storage containers on a barge that would be okay. combined into a cube that was rather large, several of them. But it wasn't storage containers. It was that size, right. and it's in the background, and people have always wondered what it was. And, of course, we got into our Saturn Cube technology uh, stuff and yeah. then sound waves, and then that's what you're addressing. When you get a chance, send me that by email, a picture of that. The reason okay. that, that that piques my interest is I'll just quickly go through this. The adiabatic quantum computer is housed in a cube. It's a, it's a shielded cube that shields it from all electromagnetic interference from the outside. Number two, do you guys recall that um, there's a monolithic piece of um, magnetic material? It's not a cube, but it's a rectangle that is in the UN, and they actually have it set up in a ceremonial room, much like yeah. a chapel. Okay, so we have that. The other issue is, I don't know if you recall, but um, going back just a couple of years in San Francisco and in the Bay and also on the East Coast, I think it was Connecticut, they had two what were called Google barges. Yep. Okay, and these had shipping containers on them that were all welded together. This is in my in my book, um, 2048 Diamonds in the Rough. I used the Google barges in that. But the point is, if you've got a barge, you've got a cube, you've got the Google barges, there's maybe some crossover there. But the issue that I'm driving at here is that that probably, in my estimation, from a physics standpoint, that cube offshore, and I don't know anything about it, I'm making conjecture here, that was magnetic, that it was a monolithic piece of magnetic material that would connect physically with the Brookhaven lab in New York the relativistic heavy ion collider that is rumored conjecture speculation at this point that it may have produced a directed energy beam at the base of the twin towers causing the explosions to take place and you mentioned the warping of the vehicles that's a directed energy weapon effect mm -hmm. so I really want to go down the rabbit hole here on this cube offshore because I sounds to me like it's tied to the collider at Brookhaven. Yeah, and also of interest was all the witnesses, of course, that there were sitting there watching the show of 9-11 to witness this thing happen uh, that were, of course, reported about that had Mossad relations or whatever it was. But there was definitely some intelligence people sitting there watching this event. And if we have that cue, Brookhaven and a directed energy weapon being observed by the intelligence community, that to me is a storyline. Big time. That's really good stuff you guys have. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Well, it just, you know, 9 11 represents, you know, the 9 11 gate, and I think they do these things based upon. Um, the alignments that are going on in the planets, um, in the you know cosmos, and all of the information that they know that we don't necessarily know on what they're trying to accomplish behind the scenes, what these cults are trying to to do at certain times. It's like a building up of things. It's it's like they're you know, just like with all the research and technology they did underground and all that ties into CERN uh, with the looking glass and, you know, all the Dulce and Area 51, all those projects uh, with what they were trying to do um, and the remote viewing. And so all of those things are documented, you know, through the military and a lot of those things are released and people can read, read that information. So I just think that, you know, CERN is, is, we don't know exactly what, you know, if there, there's po possibly portals that are open already around the world. They're just not like a dimension dimension. And um, 
but CERN is quite different. It's a very powerful um, collider that is wanting to open up a portal. In their own words, they're looking for a parallel universe. And so that's where Janus fits in that Tim and I were working on uh, for another show. But the duality, one face being in one dimension and one being in the other, it's like a duality that they want to fuse these two dimensions together and to have their golden age with uh, Saturn uh, was the ruler of the golden age and uh, before the flood. And so they want this golden age again. This is what they want. And they want to be able to uh, ascend into um, and have this dimension. That's what they want, to be their own god. Mm -hmm. and, you, and so I don't, yeah. I don't know ahead. how that's going to work with... I can't envision how that would work as far as, you know, the mark of the beast and uh, how is that going to work for the rest of the world? Do you have to plug into this supercomputer in order to be part of this ascension? And people that don't believe in the Lord that that want to be part of these things, they'll, they'll flock to it, <laughs> you know. And we've talked before about possibly the grid going down and then have an excuse that, you know, the computers, we can't get on the computers anymore. If you want to be part of this computer system that we have in place, then you're going to have to take uh, this biometric uh, mark and have this ID. Uh, that's a possibility. So we're just so close to what they're doing. I mean, in September, they're going to really, uh, this is going to be a very powerful time when they're going to um, that's have it. this, that's yeah, this, and, yeah, and it's so it's, yeah, it's going to be interesting uh, that month for sure. Definitely. I, I'm really grateful for you bringing to my attention Carbon 7. And I watched the video that you sent to me this morning and wrote down, transcribed what they were talking about. I found it so fascinating. Um, please put a link to that um, with this video, if you would, for others to view that video so they have the background. But very quickly, just to go over that, what really keys in on me is this is the grand deception. Again, what is the motivating factor? What is driving... 10,000 scientists at CERN to all be doing the same thing, the agreed upon agenda, and what what has brought all of these people to say, yeah, let's do this. You're looking at the grand deception of immortality. The original lie from Satan in the Garden of Eden was, you will become gods. We've talked about that before. But I'm reiterating that because that's the core, pardon the pun with the apple, but that's the core of what is motivating and spurring these people to move forward with such dangerous technology is they truly believe in the golden age. They believe that when they open the portal, they will be able to create a new plane of existence or enter a new plane of existence or bring in to our plane of existence a new dimension, a new plane of existence here or the other way around they may view the fact that opening the portal allows them to be transported into a new plane of existence, into a new realm of the Golden Age, to remove themselves from this planet and go to maybe another Earth in another dimension, a parallel world that may in fact be what you would consider to be Earth, but exists in another plane of existence, another dimension. They, I'm beginning to suspect, believe that they are going to be removed from this dimension and moved through the portal into another. I have been under the perhaps misunderstanding or misconception that they were trying to bring entities into this world. Now that may be true. It may be a two-step process. They may be bringing entities into this world as step one through the portal. 
step two is then they move with these entities back through the portal to this other dimension where it is the golden age and they ascend into this other golden age through the portal. I've maintained that at 14 TeV, tera electron volts, that will establish a fixed portal. If you have a fixed portal in, say, September, then you have the ability to move through it in both directions. The carbon-7 information you sent to me today, I think, demonstrates that they believe they're going to escape the problems of the Earth that they're helping to create with strange lits, et cetera, et cetera, Fukushima, whatever, they're going to leave this polluted and damaged world and go into another world that is their golden age world. And I'll stop there because that's a lot to digest. Yes, I've, I've uh, come to almost a similar uh, conjecture that, uh, that it is about an escape plan. This is about a, a uh, the judgment of God is coming. If we avoid being here when he gets here, when Jesus opens up, or you know, the Armageddon is where is is kind of the last stand, as they would call it in the movies, a movie called Last Stand. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I'm just tying some of the movies here. The 300 feet down thing I've been thinking about with CERN. Why is it 300 down? Why do we have movies called 300 and 300 Rise of an Empire? You know, uh, is it to overlap into that 300 down on the Saturn connection to have that established portal 300 inside of that sphere, 300 inside of this sphere, and then you have a bridge established, kind of like a docking, kind of like a docking portal to two. Uh, this is where we got into talking Janus and all this stuff. Janus is the bridge. Janus bridges two things. Uh, and so, let, let me interrupt just for a second. Can you explain a little bit more about 300 as it relates to Saturn? Are you talking about 300 rings or 300 dimension? I am not. Uh, as it pertains to Saturn, I would uh, look for others to add to that. I'm 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 looking at the concept of just like when we were talking fire in the middle, uh, the Higgs boson. Uh, the pyramids where they overlap, the fields overlap into that central area, that that is what I'm looking at, is where the two, the overlap zone. It's kind of like they had to go into the Earth in order to establish an overlap into the Saturn ring. Uh, that's the, it's the overlap zone of like we see in the middle of the pyramid concept where where we have the overlap right in the middle where Chris calls it the fire in the middle and so to me that's the bridging it's kind of like an overlap is the bridging mechanism with the two fields of some sort that's my guess at this point but that's why 300 down uh, and uh, it, uh, this is the for the people with the pop culture that movie is about Sparta that movie is about the history of supposedly connecting to their, you know, this age of, uh, their their age without God, basically. They were their own gods, kind of. And uh, it also connects to uh, the history with the uh, tribe of Dan. It also connects with the serpent. Um, and it also connects um, with the last movie ended very strangely, and nobody could explain why, but it was basically Isis. Isis was taking revenge for the her Osiris and waging war to put them back together was the ending of that show because it made no sense otherwise to anybody else out there <laughs> but it looked like that was a I, that was kind of a dedication to ISIS going on right. a war path and then we got ISIS all over the place um, but I think that's what we're looking at a escape plan and Armageddon is a last stand if they can't get out sounds like a reverse rapture yeah, you're right. Yeah, that's what it is. If they can't build the bri if they can't bridge their way into Tomorrowland, which is these raves and stuff that they're 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 telling the you know Tomorrowland is where they want to go, where they just the movie mm -hmm. culture, Titan AE, the Titan AE, so, the, the Genesis yeah. device, starting their own new their own creation, 
They want to escape and create. Let's take two things. The movie Interstellar, Saturn figured into that. The golden age that they created on Saturn as their off-planet colony in that movie. Um, do you think that perhaps, and I'm throwing this out, that Saturn is where they hope to travel to rather than extracting the spirits, as I've been talking about, from Saturn and bringing those to Earth. Again, maybe it's a two-step process. They bring, they bring the spirits from Saturn. The, the spirits are the ascended masters. They are the uh, benevolent aliens or benevolent uh, forefathers that they keep speaking of. If you want to call them the greys or the aliens, there's been this whole hypothesis that there are benevolent beings that have been watching over us. This was reflected in the Carbon 7 video even that we saw um, that somehow in full disclosure of aliens it'll be shown that the benevolent ancestors have been watching over us, they've returned, they're going to take care of us. So perhaps that's a, ref um, a description of the spirits coming from being released and traveling through this plasma conduit that I've talked about established between Saturn and Earth that they come to Earth and are disclosed and revealed as our benevolent ancestors and then there's the ascension from Earth back to Saturn with them through this dimensional portal or plasma conduit whatever you want to call it so I just throw that out for us to discuss a little bit I think it's entirely likely what you're talking about because the whole con the whole interstellar mindset was well we have to go out there and we have to establish this bridge because otherwise this planet's going to die and their point was that the planet was on is being destroyed they're destroying the planet they're burning the ships they're burning the mayflower you know they came the Mayflower's there, okay, whatever you want to say, Ponce de Leon, burn the ships, we're marching inland. That's what they're doing, you know. And so they're devastating the the environment to where there's no going back, you know, and they have to move forward. Interstellar is that storyline. Uh, Interstellar is, well, we either succeed or die in the process. What do you think, Chris, from the ancient standpoint? How does that work in? Well, um, I got a couple of things, but one thing I wanted to say was that um, I just wanted to tell everybody that there are two Metatrons and there are two Anantas and there are two Lameches, so there's a mirror effect from the very beginning. So there's two of all of them. Um, so I, I just wanted to point that out. Um, and then the other thing that I wanted to say was that the Bible does say that the abyss is going to open, which I do believe is um, in the cosmos and under the ground. They're connected to each other in the celestial realms, um, possibly Saturn. But I wanted to say that the Bible says that men's hearts are going to fail. And I do believe that it is going to be like in the days of Noah and the Titans are going to be released from the pit and to the earth even though um, there might be some type of escape plan or whatever but isn't it to our understanding according to the Bible that the Antichrist is uh, going to sit on the throne that he is going to claim to be God of the earth but at that time there is a possibility that if they open a portal or at that time when the abyss is open and the Antichrist is here, maybe there is going to be some type of rapture because there is going to be a different uh, frequency on Earth during that time. So those are my thoughts on it. No, I, I agree with you. I mean, it makes total sense that you have, as above, so below, you have two pits. You have Saturn and you have the, the bottomless pit here on Earth. So, well, the, yeah. abyss, the abyss and the netherworld are 
are two separate places. There's different levels, from what I understand, uh, in their occultist uh, teachings that they have seven gates, that every planet has a gate. So there's a gate. Um, and then, you know, Janus is the gatekeeper, too. So we know Thoth was the god of the roadways, and the, the Mer Mercury, the messenger, but Janus uh, is the, he has two faces and he is the gatekeeper. He's the one with a key and he ha he's the gatekeeper. Now he has a key and Sybil, which is actually um, Rhea, which is Saturn's female counterpart, she has a key too and she represents the Milky Way too. Amazing. Did you know that there is a financial fund known as the Janus Fund, and they use the two face as its emblem? Yes. As its corporate yes. logo? There's a lot more than Janus than we've ever thought about when Chris and I got into this, and uh, I think that's why we were going to do a whole separate show on that kind of stuff, because Janus is much bigger um, <laughs> as far as being part of Gates and the Keeper of Gates and the Bridger of things, uh, and um, wow. you know, uh, also the thirteenth pillar, the Hegelian dialectic. There's a lot tied into Janus that uh, we'll we want to expand on with more uh, images uh, for that. Um, CERN definitely is connected with Janus. Janus is definitely connected with CERN, um, <clears throat> and. Uh, the, the, the fire in the middle stuff that we were talking with the Higgs boson and CERN, uh, that was fabulous. Uh, that little that little diagram of that triangle that you had with the little hexagon in the up? middle. Can you put that up again? Yeah, we'll highlight for you, Chris. To, we'll highlight your box. And uh, why don't you put up the Higgs boson and the triangle, and let's talk about the fire in the middle pyramid and CERN real quick, what that means. Okay. I'm trying to get the thing. It won't let me pull it up. Oh, uh, okay. Well, you tell us when you're ready. But uh, oh, I thought that, that was good. this ancient civilization technology that has sure. basically been reverse engineered. You know, or uh, here she goes. Let's go ahead and click on that middle box with Chris. And let's go to that... Um, Let's get that uh, triangle with the Higgs boson because that's just fabulous. Yeah. yeah. Oh, sorry. Let's see. Okay. You know, uh, from a public relations standpoint, the Higgs boson, I think, has been a, uh, a smoke screen of sorts in the sense that they had to justify to the world the expenditures that they made for this large Hadron Collider. So they had to have a success. They had a number of failures that were very public failures. And so they had to come up with something. Now whether they've actually found the God particle or not is, is debatable. But let's assume that they have, and we'll go forward with your graphic. Go ahead. This is your Janus graphic, right? And the Higgs boson's in the bottom triangle? Uh-huh. Yeah. And there's Anthony's uh, 600 cell tetrahedron up top. <laughs> you got it. You got it. That's a really magnificent slide there. I mean, there's so much to this that it's like, uh, it's really mind boggling. Do we have uh, anything with the pyramid with the pyre in the middle, the fire in the middle shot? You got that also? Because I want to look at the Higgs right there in the bottom. That bottom symbol, that middle point is supposed to be the Higgs. That is at the center of this triangle or pyramid or pyramid. Mm -hmm. And I, I wonder, we had a shot of that the other day we were looking at with the pyramid. Yeah. Let me ask a question. When we look at the, the left and right um, multicolored objects, the front mm -hmm. and back, those are pictures of what? I mean, they're... They're paintings. The brain. The brain. So are these MRI images of the brain? Uh, I'm not really sure if 
if they're just um, they're like just like a some type of <laughs> yeah, just like a dimensional type thing. This is the front lobe, and this is the back. So um, I had another picture that shows uh, the twin deities. One of them right. has a split, he has a split brain, so he's like right. half and half, and then the one is one deity. So one is male and female, and the other one's male, and they're tri they're a triple deity and they represent the middle of the pyramid. Okay. Okay. Well, that's a, it's interesting with the right left hemisphere of the brain, the the right, the you know, the um, the differences in the two brains and what they do, the two halves. And here this, we're dealing with this Janus type thing. Here's a picture of a there pyramid it here. Yeah. It's uh, see the fire in the middle. That's the fire in the middle. Right. Yeah. That's. I wish we had the overlap of the corners overlapping with that center and the top overlapping with that center, because it's that overlap that I think is connected to the three hundred, the depth, because they're, they're, it's kind of like looping two loops across each other. So you have a circle and the I forget what like the tetrahedron, but um, where were those? I thought we had one of those where we saw the the overlapping inside the pyramid hmm. because I think that's the dimensional uh, connection for the bridge that we're talking about with Saturn and why they go down it's kind of the as above so below why go down to go up you know some, something like that you know it's one of those weird things that don't, the, don't the magnetic ley lines intersect within the center of the pyramid I would imagine. I know that many pyramids are built on the ley lines. I'm not sure about the center of the. I would imagine it has to be connected because why else build all the pyramids on ley lines? Right. Well, and they ley also li ley lines are connected to water underneath. Also, that's the water. The aquifer thing was also connected with a lot of this ancient moving large stones and stuff that we don't know how they did it, but. Yeah, I think they did it with a, a frequency, but um, the the pyramid uh, also is like a big speaker, and it faces the ground, and so they're also connected. Like the Giza pyramid is connected to Mount Sinai, and so the ley line there, and so these pyramids are connected to each other all over. There's also uh, crystal pyramids. Uh, underneath the ocean, um, and I think that's where the um, um, Bermuda Triangle is. Yeah. But there's a lot of pyramids. There's some under the ocean, and there's there's one in Antarctica. There's there's pyramids in the United States. There's in different. They're all over the world. Yeah, I started thinking when I looked at the globe, when I looked at the Earth and thinking of Anthony's 600-cell tetrahedron as the model of the universe, and then the, these inverted pyramids, because we have the ones that are standing up above the ground, but then we have inverted ones that are the collectors. And if you have these different things like the, uh, the Bermuda Triangle and it's opposite on the opposite side of the world, it almost looks like a booster and en energy boosters and collectors and beamings, you know, it's it's kind of a strange big apparatus of collecting energy and releasing energy, um, you know, and it, I don't know what you think of that, but it just seems like a very complex global machine. With these yeah, pyramids. no, I, I agree. I think the Earth is basically a machine. Yeah, I mean, it really does seem that way, the way that they built all this ancient megalithic stuff. <laughs> <clears throat> so this yeah. is the inside of a pyramid when they're chanting. Oh yeah, this is yeah, what it yeah. looks like. I forgot the frequency of that when they were doing the Om chant in the uh, pyramid of Giza, and they yeah. this was the magnetic fi file or what is it? Magnetic um, the the Mag file. magnetic filings, iron filings. filings, filings. Yeah, this was the Om chant. Yeah, with the eye of Saturn. Yeah, you started getting the eye, start shaping into the eye. Okay. If I so hold that, hold that thought right there in that image. 
couple of days ago I ran across the sonification of data from CERN. They've taken some of the data, the raw digital numbers that come from the particles that collide in the detectors and the detectors generate data from those collisions. They're analyzing the energy, they're analyzing the trajectory of the particles as they spin off from the collisions. This is the data that is in the computer and they've taken the raw data and morphed it, if you will, or translated it into musical notes, much like the notes on oh, a sheet yeah. of paper. And then they've actually played those notes. And you can go online and you can listen to this, but it is called the sonification of CERN. It's the music. It's the frequencies. Now, a couple of conversations ago, we all touched briefly on the fact that we believe that CERN has something to do with frequencies, generating frequencies, the use of sound by the ancients and today. Here you've got a representation of that sound within the pyramids. There's been a lot of speculation that frequencies are generated within the inner chambers and by the granite structure itself of the pyramids. Frequencies are a big deal. And so when you're talking about chanting and ohms, you're talking about digital representations of frequencies that are generated by the collisions at CERN. Uh, we talk about the Hebrew and Sanskrit glass plates of ancient writings um, that are at CERN that are receiving energy in the form of frequencies from these collisions and that they have some occultic ritualistic process that's involved with having those um, those writings, those Sanskrit and Hebrew writings being subject to the frequencies that come from the machine. I mean, this all gets wrapped in together. But the fact that they actually came out and said, hey, here's the music of CERN. Here's the sonification of the data. I found amusing but also very enlightening. Mm -hmm. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, it was really interesting. I, I, I couldn't believe it when you sent it to me. I was like, oh my gosh. You know, I mean, I, I had no idea that they put it in to sound and that you can listen to CERN as a musical instrument. But, yeah, but it doesn't sound half bad either. It's kind of nice. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't. I mean, I knew that it was like a musical instrument. I just didn't know that we could hear it. I didn't know that they had any type of sound bites that we could listen to. So uh, that was new to me. Yeah, it's kind of cool. And where did you say we could hear it again? I'll send you the uh, the link. I just saw it a couple of days ago. But you can look up sonification of CERN or sounds or music of CERN, and it'll it'll pop up a wave file. Um, I just had a question regarding CERN. What do you think? How many? How many? I've been looking at it, and I'm wondering how many. Uh, <clears throat> we talked about directed energy weapons. We talked about um, dealing with uh, DNA, uh, holograms. Um, how many features do you think that CERN actually can do? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's like it's kind yeah. of like the Swiss Army knife of it is. of weapon of a uh, of musical weapon. That's why it's in Switzerland, you ding dong. <laughs> Swiss Army knife. <laughs> you hit it. That's the secret of CERN. It's the a Swiss, Swiss Army knife. I oh, should have known it. <laughs> <laughs> the PhD. I can see the PhD written on that. The Swiss <laughs> Army knife of CERN. <laughs> oh, that's now, funny. It is, it is so multifaceted. We've all grown to appreciate that, the three of us in our discussions. But, yes, you're right. You, it's almost like, oh, okay, blame everything on CERN, everything that's going <laughs> exactly. on in the world. Blame it on that. You know? Exactly. So, I mean, again, let's. you started this show today mentioning the, the tragic German Wings uh, aircraft crash that took place a couple of days ago. And, yes, I'm guilty of blaming that on CERN to an extent. 
-hmm. only because of its proximity to CERN, the crash right. site, and some of the weird things that happened with it. And so, yeah, I can laugh at myself and say, oh, I blame a lot of things on CERN. But you cannot step away from CERN and say that it does not have a multiple of uses and a multiple effects upon the planet and our direct individual lives each day. So, yeah, it's well, funny, but it, it is multi-layered. Well, would you describe the plasma helical conduit kind of like a tractor beam concept of a... Sure. a and that's the the only thing about this this air crash thing is the proximity, as you said, was what made it interesting. But th my other point is, I I can't honestly believe uh, the media releases anymore when it comes to these airplanes because we watch so many of these airplanes. They found them, they discovered them. It's over here, it's over there, and it's kind of like, well, this is the official story right now. Um, but uh, you know, then uh, yeah, I I just don't believe the system, <laughs> and I don't rule out I don't rule out the proximity, uh, but I have no way of proving it either. But the yeah. point is, it's uh, it's just the people in control aren't aren't uh, their words no good, in my book, and uh, you know, uh, yeah. at least we know that CERN uh, we know their test target dates. We're trying to unravel several things related to it. Chris is doing a great job of just unraveling a lot of the ancient connections and this all pyramid technology with CERN. And uh, I think we have to venture into some uncharted territory for us um, and introduce other things to the Christian community that uh, maybe that were originally meant to be in the Christian community related to the Maseroth, the Zodiac, things like that that we'll have to investigate more. Um, and take it back from the astrology end of things of the, that the pagan systems did and um, see what we can come up with. But, um, yeah. yeah. Chris, did you have anything you wanted to say? Um, yeah, I was finding it interesting that Mithra, um, you know, it's in Vedic cosmology and then in, you know, the Judean Christian and the Gnostics, uh, they and their remains equates Mithra with Metatron. Really, Metatron and Mithra. Wow. And well, there's two Metatrons too. Remember that. And <laughs> uh, he was. I think that he has like 36 wings and innumerable eyes. Um, the three sixes. Yeah, Persian. The Persians uh, relate him to Mithra to twenty-eight Izeds, uh, the spirits of the uh, Ara Mazda. And I guess we've we've talked about Mazda before, and I did a blog on that uh, on the Peacock King. But um, I didn't I know wanted, that. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to add a point to what you're talking about with the ancient uh, ancient civilizations. As it pertains to me in the end times dealing biblically with the uh, book of Daniel and the two legs of the statue and going to the ten toes, the miry clay, uh, iron and miry, miry clay, uh, it really does look to me that we're dealing with the revived Roman Empire. And when we're looking at that, uh, this past week it just we just looked at the festival of Hilaria as it pertained to the days that these things were going on and for a pop culture reference that I thought was extremely strange and out of place was the announcement of Angelina Jolie uh, that she's having her uh, ovaries removed on the day that is associated in Hilaria with castration and I said that's a mighty interesting coincidence to have that story come out on the same day my only point was that these people still follow the Sybil Addis cult, the Mithras cult, these Roman, uh, these Roman festivals, these Roman holidays, these Roman rituals. They parallel it in the news, and it's just becoming more and more obvious every time we check these things out. So let's take that point, and I go to Chris. September. Dates, rituals, occult symbol, symbology. What do we see that perhaps the ancients, be it Romans, Sumerians, 
what can we say about September that we can pin on what they believe are their occultic dates that would also, we're looking at CERN of course, doing their activities on significant dates. Well, Maybe. it's the, the autumn equinox and um, this was the time when the Bota Ra would travel through the constellations and they, in their old star maps, you know, they have the Dendara map. I guess they're, when they talk about Leo rising, and Leo was uh, killed by Hercules, which represents Orion and o Osiris. We don't want to get too much into that. We're working on a show to explain all these things. It's very confusing, but... Um, that has a lot to do with September and the god Janus. It has to do with the autumn equinox and the refraction of the sun. So, mm -hmm. so you're thinking September like I am. I'm looking at it from the timetable of experiments at CERN, their own published calendar, which is on my website. Um, and I like to overlay that with what you see as significant in the zodiac and in their practices and in their, you know, such as the boat of rock. Um, because again, we have to we have to look at both of those, the physics and the spiritual, to try to discern if we can what's going to happen later on this year. Yeah, it's a possibility that it's just another layer of something that they're doing like 9-11 until another certain day. I know that uh, there's someone that I respect their work very much and they think that uh, this something will happen in, in 2016. And then there's another person who I highly respect that sent me some information on a very uh, significant alignment in 2017 and it lines up with a movie of Hercules and the releasing of the Titans during this alignment that's happening in 2017, the same alignment. So, I mean, we can't totally be for sure. I do really think, and, and these people that I watch their work closely, I do think that they believe that something is going to happen significantly in September. Uh, there's going to be uh, something that very powerful is going to happen that month. Um, financial advisors are talking about this uh, that have watched the market for a long time. And so I think that since they're revving up the machine, I mean, the AI quantum computer already, they have gotten to where they want to be. Their computer, they're, they've been successful in getting this completed. And so uh, if CERN is successful in their completion with the uh, TEVs and how powerful this thing is going to be pretty powerful uh, during that time, is it, is it that they're going to be able to get to a point to where they're going to open a portal and get closer to merging something uh, based on a ritual that they're doing worldwide with the pyramids and the ley lines and um, sacrifices and all these rituals and dances and uh, you know things that they're doing I don't know I, I it's really hard to say, but I do know that it's it's something that we should watch for, just like we were watching the Black Sabbath Cloth Sun. Um, we don't know if demons came through during that time. I mean, I'm very prayerful, so they're probably not coming around me. But <laughs> you know, they could they could very well um, they could have very well uh, done something during that time and. I'm not really sure. I'm not sure. Well, I well, think you made it. Go yeah, ahead. go ahead. No, no, no. I, I'm just thinking that uh, what we're talking about here is as we watch society and these events happen, 
I think we're going to see this out. You're seeing this outburst of this anger and these riots and then this war. It's almost like the god Mars is, you know, kicking into high gear. Uh, and the people who don't aren't sealed by the Holy Spirit are, are being preyed upon. Uh, in the sense that they're they have little uh, defense against going into rage. I'm watching people in cars ramming cars in parking lots. I'm watching a lot of raging going on. Uh, and to me, this is kind of the spirit that we saw with the French Revolution, which was that that kind of uh, group spirit of rage that uh, and madness that uh, is a bacchanalian event. But that was my comment. Well, you know, you're of the three of us. You're the one that's kind of focused more on the pop culture, and I thank you for that. And and the reason that I I bring it up is that we know that they, for whatever reason, they have to announce what their plans are, and we see that through pop culture. And so I ask you the question, and I know you're not prepared for this, but do you see any movie releases that are coming up this year, in particular in September, that might be indicative of their plans? Well, the May May first May Day is the big one for this year, as far as uh, Age of Ultron, which is the uh, Avengers movie where Tony Stark's, uh, I believe his Jarvis, his his computer Jarvis that he's always talking to. Becomes uh, becomes AI and turns on him. So I believe you're seeing your A diabetic computer rolling out in this movie. Where What's the name of the movie again? This is called the Age of Ultron. This is the Marvel's uh, next release. This is the big one for the year. If you watch the Iron Man movies, Iron Man one, two, three, this would be like. Uh, this is probably the event. This is the Avengers version, but uh, Age of Ultron. This one is the AI becoming alive. This is going in line with the Chappie movie that just came out, which is another AI. So they're AIing us to death right now, and these AIs are bad. The other theme that I'm seeing going on is the zombie apocalypse stuff, and also the other thing, uh, the theme I'm seeing going around is the theme of resurrection. Okay. Yesterday was the day of Addis's resurrection, the resurrection of Addis. The previous movies this year, Jupiter Ascending, is, as Chris knows, she, got, she clued me into this, Jupiter is the resurrected Saturn. So there's a lot of resurrection going on, and that all leads into the rising, raising Osiris theme of the Freemasons and the occult agenda that Tom Horn was talking about for 2016. So we're seeing a lot of resurrection themes going on right now, and I think what we're witnessing right now politically is the destruction of the United States government. Uh, in, the, in, in the movies White House Down, uh, uh, I forget what the one was called, something Olympus Has Fallen, using those terms, right. uh, both White House are government Hello? Can you All hear right. me? Yeah, I think Chris must have clicked on something. But uh, sure, here she comes. Um, I think she's back. She might. I think she just clicked the wrong yeah. thing. We got Did off. You? No, I didn't click anything. Oh, just okay. the server went out. server went out? All yeah. right, well, you want to yeah. wrap up at this point? I was basically saying that I... I saw today that John Kerry was given, as of yesterday, while we're watching the plane crashes and everything, uh, that we we're uh, that he was given uh, basically authority over the NDAA as a as a presidential memorandum straight off the White House website, and then he's doing a yeah. immigration thing today, to where you can hire immigrants uh, in the police forces. So I see that there's major problems going on with the government structure right now. And 
that will limit the amount of time we have to do research as far as dealing with CERN in, in September. In September, point. the first movie that's coming out is called No Escape. And oh, the, really? second movie, the second movie is called Jane Got a Gun, hmm. Kitchen Sink, Triple Nine, The Visit, Black Mass, Captive, Everest, Maze Runner, Pawn Sacrifice, Hotel Transylvania, and The Intern. That's those are all the movies coming in September. Nothing like a little black mass. Good. <laughs> wow. Okay. Well, um, you got? Can you guys seen as my picture? Yeah, we're seeing your picture. Yeah, your camera's off. Oh, okay. Let me get that back on. Not that it matters. Okay, <laughs> there we are. Um, let me go back to the plane crash for just a minute. Um, gravimetric distortions. This is what um, Clyde Lewis and I spent many hours talking about last night on the radio. And I, I hadn't heard of this, and that's why it was fascinating to me. But his conjecture is that possibly, possibly, the connection between CERN and this aircraft going down was due to the magnets at CERN causing a gravi gravimetric distortion of the Alps themselves. And he cited Marcus Gerk in 1995, a geophysicist, Marcus Gerk published a, a speculative scenario paper in which he said that there are um, gravimetric distortions or anomalies, gra gravity waves that pass through mountain ranges, in particular the Alps, right where this plane went down. Um, also the Himalayas, the Southeast Asia, and Andes, and, and, and Antarctica. In other words, what he's saying is there are these hairline thin waves of gravimetric energy that pass through and distort the mountains and also distort the areas above the mountains and perhaps this plane would, uh, encountered a gravimetric wave and that's what affected its avionics and brought it down. It, it's probable. Um, he also cited Brookhaven Laboratory in New York, the uh, RHIC, the particle accelerator, saying that there were at least three instances of aircraft, including possibly JFK's light aircraft, going down, JFK's son, um, aircraft going down that were attributed to by physicists and by the media at the time to the activities with the large magnets in the particle accelerator at Brookhaven. Now, again, it's all speculation. We're not accusing anyone of anything that's nefarious or illegal. But you look at the, the, the timing of events that are going on related to the timing of activities with these particle colliders and these massive magnets, and you have to say that there, there has to be some type of connection going on, whether it's deliberate or accidental, who knows. Um, going back to the 300-foot depth of CERN under the Earth and gravimetric waves, Certainly, if you're down in the earth that deep and you're producing waves of magnetic energy and you're distorting the gravity of the planet itself by doing that and causing earthquakes around the planet that has been shown to be happening with the activities at CERN, it's not beyond the realm of possibility that their depth is for the purpose of affecting the earth in Specifically, it's gravity, it, the gravity waves that already exist within the Earth. And that may tie into using gravity as a way to help in the opening of the portal. So we're seeing spin-off effects in the, in, the, in the environment, whether it's aircraft or it's the movement of a Hurricane Aaron on the day of 9-11 moving from offshore to inshore towards New York at the time of 9-11 and the activities with the Brookhaven Laboratory and its magnets possibly affecting the course and the path of a hurricane. So anyway, that's a lot. Now does the Atlas Mountains 
tie into that too? Uh, let me see my list here. Um, I have the Andes. I don't have the Atlas Mountains on the list from the article. But sure, possibly. Yeah, I was curious. I did a study on uh, the Atlas Mountains the with the Hercules pillars and the ancients and how uh, all that symbology is um, in certain areas, you know, by Africa and... Um, you know, across the ocean, and how there was uh, like a um, ancient uh, pirates. I guess they would travel through them through certain areas uh, and do different trades. You know, during uh, in history. But I just thought it was interesting. So I, I was wondering about the Atlas Mountains. <laughs> yeah. You know, my <laughs> final. My final conclusion on this plane crash is that, as I've said before, I, I do think if we're going to make a correlation between CERN's activities and this plane crash, the fact that it was a single aircraft and not the multiples of other Airbus-type aircraft, Airbus-manufactured aircraft that were in the air at the same time, not necessarily in the same location, but why is it that only one aircraft was affected? if it was affected by the magnetic activities with CERN and causing a gravimetric wave. I kind of differ a little bit away from Clyde. I mean, that's that's an interesting theory, and it, it may hold water. But because we're dealing with a single aircraft, a, a, a smooth glide path, consistent airspeed, and no deviation from course left or right, it's obviously under control, whether it's the pilot who was uh, allegedly left alone and locked in, locked himself in the cockpit. I don't believe that for a second. Or it was the autopilot. Or, and this is where my speculation comes in, a directed energy weapon, much like a tractor beam, utilized to overpower the aircraft and bring it down as a demonstration. Possibly a blood sacrifice possibly ritual, but to me it looks like that aircraft was under control by external forces and brought down. And no way to prove it, no way to put the label on someone and say they're guilty of a crime. I'm not doing that. I'm just looking at the physics and saying, yeah, th this is how it could be done. Yeah, the, the only reason I <clears throat> tend to agree with that is if I look at the history of testing new things in the military, where we have the old atomic photos of everybody sitting in the little bunkers with their little glasses on watching the bunker go off. And then we got 9-11, we got a bunch of people sitting over there hopping up and down after some cube on a barge uh, twists up a bunch of metal cars. Uh, you know, uh, that reminds me of the nuclear tests. So we don't know if there was other people on site to witness this also as the tractor beam effect. That's just pure speculation. But it, you start putting enough of this together with, um, well, it's, we're just, we are left wondering because yeah. we, have, we have such a dishonest media and a dishonest governments that it's very hard to put together things. Yeah, it's pure speculation. But, you know, I'll throw the question I threw out on the radio and was hoping that we'd get a pilot that would, or someone knowledgeable on that that could answer it. But why in a two-hour flight, a short-duration puddle jump, you know, uh, shuttle aircraft, why would a pilot leave the, air, the cockpit shortly after reaching cruising altitude and cruising speed and essentially the autopilot being engaged at that point? Why would he leave the cockpit? Why was he unable to get through the door using the emergency passcode that he had was it suicidal? Was it a jihadist, you know, undercover? Who knows, whatever. But why would a pilot leave the aircraft I or the cockpit? I don't believe the cover story for a minute. And when it's put out in the mainstream media as, you know, the end-all uh, reason or, or conjecture on their part, so soon after the black box being recovered, when their own experts said it would take them days to decipher the, vo the voice recordings and, this, and the audible tones from the alarms. 
I don't buy it for a second, and so that leads me to an external causa causation for the crash. And I also, I, I agree with you. I'm waiting for our YouTube friends who are number crunchers to find all the consistencies with the numbers that says, that puts their fingerprints on this uh, event, just like 9-11 has a number of fingerprints all over it also. Uh, somebody is probably going to find some number of fingerprints on this event also. That's yep. just me speculating, but. Sure. All right. Guys, take it home, Chris. Okay. Well, sorry, my dog jumped in my lap. He won't <laughs> let me put him down. It's all right. um, well, you know, we don't know when time thing. You know, the timeline is. I, I do feel like we are in a certain timeline um, because of all the things that are happening and how God is waking up so many people. Um, there's so many people that are waking up to the world and the secret societies and all the symbolism and everything that is that is happening right now and being able to see uh, closer and closer of, of things that are going on. But I think that um, You know, God just wants people to repent and to love Him and to come to Him. And I think that um, the Lord is waking up people so they can see reality, the true reality. Not just the, the world and the patterns of the world, but the true reality of, of the seriousness of the things that are going on around us and the trickery of all the uh, religions and New Age religions and all the things that uh, the occultists have made to look like angels of light. So they've made everything look uh, good to them and make them think that this is this is a good thing. And you know that's what Satan does. He he is an angel of light. He's in disguise and. So, you know, Jesus came and he died for us and he, he shed his blood for us. He was the atonement for us in order to save us from this world. And the only people that are going to live forever and have immortality are the people who live in Christ, are the people who see uh, the truth and not fall into this... Uh, this trick of you can be your own God and the immortality of, you know, the, the ascension of the seven chakras, because that's just a trick of Satan. He actually uh, is, is all of these uh, seven angels put into one. And that's his trick. He's the trickster. And, and so my hope is, you know, from doing these shows is that, you know, people can realize uh, and seek for themselves. Don't take our word for it. Uh, find out the truth for themselves and know that uh, Jesus is God. He's, he was God in the flesh, and he just didn't, didn't die on the cross. He, he rose again after the third day. No other God or fallen angel that appeared to be God rose again and had so much power that they could just ascend right up into the heaven. They didn't have to have a vehicle or a chariot. They, he didn't have to have a vehicle or a chariot. They do. They have to have uh, all these uh, things to be able to do what they want. That's why they're doing these things. Jesus doesn't have to have CERN. He doesn't have to, we don't, he doesn't have to have his people ascend to, uh, to be in some type of, of, of uh, dimension to be you know, immortal or anything like that. No, he brings a new heaven and a new earth, and there will be no more sea in the end. And so uh, I do believe that's connected to the abyss. And, and so, you know, Jesus is the way. He's the truth. He's the light of the world, and he loves everyone. Everyone in the world is unique with a different fingerprint. He makes everyone unique and beautiful. And so I just hope that uh, people will realize uh, how much God loves them and how much we are in need of a Savior. Um, 
And I hope that people will repent and call on the name of Jesus Christ and realize that he is the only God uh, and not be tricked by these seven fallen angels. Amen. Well, Anthony, thank you for being with us today. And uh, we want to just plug your meeting this weekend again. Just go ahead and uh, tell us the contact information for Clyde's get-together at the Hilton. All right. Now, if you go to groundzero.com, um, you'll be able to find a link to that. Also on my website, anthonypatch.com, on the home page, there's a link to the event. And it's Saturday the 28th at the Hilton Hotel in Portland, Oregon. Be from 6 until 9. Uh, we will do a sound and video recording, but probably only the audio will be available. Uh, tickets are $15 at, uh, ahead of time, $20 at the door. That covers our cost for the room. This is a very expensive room. It's at the top of the Hilton, the Skyline Room. We are not making a dime off that, off this event. That is not the point. It's simply to get the information out to everyone that we can. So I encourage you to attend if you're able to. And uh, I, I thank you, my brother and my sister in Christ. I love our conversations together. And we're going to do a lot more of these where there's a lot more that we need to explore and help get the message out to people to come to Christ. That's the bottom line. Who cares about the physics? Let's right. just move on with him. Amen. Amen. The, the Christ is the only way, and this is the separation of the wheat and the tares. This is the great awakening. Wake up and and come to Christ, and uh, let's get out of here <laughs> so that we can enjoy eternity with him. Amen. You, you guys are going to be sitting at my table in heaven. We're going to have a big feast. <laughs> Just like Jesus said, you know, we're there's going to be a new song and, and there's going to be a feast and and uh, it's going to be uh, more than what we could ever imagine. Yeah, well, <laughs> it's going to be the best potluck yet. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. All right. Have a great one. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.